The definition of big O may seem a bit abstract, but in reality, there are not that many functions that will arise in our study of algorithms in this course. If you familiarize yourself with these functions and how quickly they grow, you'll be well-placed to answer any big O questions that arise in this course. So here are the most common functions that you're going to see in this course, together with an example of an algorithm whose running time is characterized by that function. The functions are arranged in increasing order, so that is, each function is big O of all the ones that follow it. So let me just quickly go through this list. Um, we, we haven't covered all these algorithms yet, obviously, so some might be unfamiliar, but you can come back and look at this again uh, after we have studied those algorithms. So constant time, theta of 1, we saw this in our definition of our computational model, so we assume that we can assign a word in memory or do arithmetic operations on addresses in constant time. Uh, theta of log n, this is the worst case time to find an element in a sorted array of size n with the algorithm of binary search. Theta of n, this is typical of iterating through an array. You just want to check each element of, array, of an array. Theta of n log n, this is also one that arises a lot in practice, so we'll see this uh, later on as the complexity of sorting an array of size n with the algorithm merge sort. Theta of n squared, that's sorting an array of size n with insertion sort, which we'll cover in the next lecture. Theta of n cubed, uh, an example of this is solving n linear equations in n variables with Gaussian elimination. And theta of 2 to the n, an example of this would be enumerating all subsets of an n element set. So these are functions that we will come across in this course, and that's a fairly comprehensive list of the functions that we will see in this course. So if you familiarize yourself with the relationship between these functions, um, you'll be in a pretty good situation. So here's an example, just to make this more concrete, of what runtimes you can roughly expect by an algorithm with these common big theta complexities. So of course we know that big theta hides a constant factor. So just from the big theta complexity, we can't really tell you what the runtime is on you know, these finite values of n here uh, in ranges from 10 to a million in this table, the input size. So these numbers that I've written in the table are computed assuming that the hidden constant factor is just one. And I'm also assuming that one operation takes one nanosecond. Okay, so take this table with a grain of salt, but it can roughly tell you, you know, if you know the big theta running time of your algorithm, it can roughly tell you on what size input it's still feasible to run that algorithm. So I got the idea for this, this table in the last slide from a talk at CppCon 2021. Uh, the link for the talk is available here. So, but I didn't want to just copy the slide for two reasons. So first, in this slide, the columns are labeled with big O values, but you know I'm a stickler for the usage of big O, and big O just means an upper bound. So, um, you know, it doesn't really tell us that that is the actual running time of the algorithm. So I think it's more appropriate to use big theta to label the columns here. The second uh, problem I had with this slide, and it's 2021, so it's not that long ago, but I think the assumption that a single operation takes one microsecond is just too pessimistic. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about sorting algorithms, and we're going to talk about insertion sort, whose worst case runtime is theta of n squared. So this slide would say that insertion sort on a vector of a million algorithms should take around 12 days. But that's way off. I tried it on my laptop, and insertion sort on a vector of a million integers 
takes around 1.5 minutes. So that's much closer to what we had on this slide. So the theta of n squared and a million entry of the table gives us 16 minutes. So it's still off by a factor of 10, but it's closer than 12 days. Likewise, on my laptop, it takes a theta of n times log n sorting algorithm around 50 milliseconds to sort a vector of a million elements. So on this slide, it says 20 seconds. And on this slide, it says 20 milliseconds. So 50 milliseconds, the actual time that I saw, is much closer to what's on the previous slide. But again, this shows you the limitations of big O type analysis for these kinds of practical computations. In practice, constants can make a huge difference.